Hi everyone, my name is Miss Huss and I'm a first grade teacher at Thurgood Marshall Elementary School in South Seattle. Hi bull pups. I hope everyone's doing well, staying safe and healthy and happy and getting some learning in as well. Uh, I miss all of my students deeply and I know other teachers feel the same way. I miss reading with you and I miss seeing your reactions to books as we read. I also miss our daily discussions uh, and just seeing your smiling faces every day. So can't wait till school is back in session and we can all see each other again. So I'm going to be reading a nonfiction book with you today. And I want to ask you, what do you know about nonfiction books? Now normally your teacher would ask you a question and you would turn and talk to your turn and talk partner. Well, as you can see, I'm in my house and I'm assuming most of you are in your homes and you don't have a turn and talk partner. You might have someone next to you that you can turn and talk to, which is great. If you don't, you can go grab a stuffy, a pet, uh, a doll, um, something that you can turn and talk to because I'll be asking you a number of questions during today's lesson. So I was going to use my pet Chloe as my turn and talk partner. Here she is. I don't know if she's going to stick around and cooperate, so we'll see. She seems like she wants to go away, but I'm going to try her, and if she runs away, then I'm going to use... Oh, there she goes. I'm going to use this stuffy as my turn and talk partner. So go ahead now and find something to be your turn and talk partner. I'll give you a few moments to go grab something. Go! Okay, hopefully you have your turn and talk partner now. So I wanna go back to the question I asked earlier, which is what do you know about nonfiction books? Grab your partner, tell your partner, what do you know? What, so thinking about what is nonfiction? What does that mean? Have you read nonfiction books before? Okay, go ahead and turn and talk. I'm gonna let my partner go first. What do you know about nonfiction books? Go ahead and turn back towards me. My partner and I talked about that nonfiction books tell true information about real things. So there's fiction books, which might have talking animals, and nonfiction books would have real animals uh, telling real facts about them, so they wouldn't be talking or living in homes or things like that. So it's real information about real things. So you might have said the same thing as my partner and I, and you can just do this signal like that, meaning same, uh, to your TV or your computer if you are thinking the same thing as me. So now I want to go ahead and look at this chart that's behind me. It's called What Good Readers Do. This chart might look familiar to you because your teacher had this hanging in your classroom. So I'm just gonna go over it to remind you some things that good readers do. So we wanna make sure you're doing these things at home as you're reading. So good readers make connections to their lives. So they're, as they're reading, they're thinking, oh, this reminds me of the time when I went to the aquarium. Or if you're reading a book about ocean animals, which we'll be doing today. Or this reminds me of that TV show I watched about sharks. Good readers also make connections between stories. So as you're reading a book about ocean animals, let's say you think, oh, this reminds me of the other book that my mom read to me the other day about ocean animals. Or this reminds me of the book my kindergarten teacher read to me about sharks or um, fish. Okay, or this reminds me of the book I read yesterday myself. Good readers also retell stories in their own words. So retelling means tell again, and you're telling the story when you're finished reading it in the order um, that it comes in the book, 
from the beginning, middle, and end in your own words. So you are remembering what's happened in the book and you can tell about what happened in the book. Good readers also visualize. That means they make a picture in their mind. Even if there are pictures already in the book, you make your own pictures and adding to them and using your own imagination. Good readers also make connections to information they already know. So if I'm reading a book about ocean animals and I already know a lot about sharks because I've done other research about sharks and I've watched a documentary and I talked to an expert, I think what I already know about sharks and then I use the new information I'm learning in my book and it builds, they build on each other. Good readers also wonder about what they are reading. So this is what we're going to focus on today is wondering. We wonder, we ask questions about what we're reading. This really helps us uh, understand the book better and remember the book and wondering before we read a book, wondering while we read the book and wondering after we finish the book. So we're going to practice that today. The book we'll be reading today is called An Ocean of Animals by Janine Scott. This is a nonfiction book that talks about the habitat where many animals live, which is the ocean. Their habitat, their home is the ocean. So we'll be reading this book today. I won't be reading the entire book to you. I'll be reading part of the book to you today. And then the next lesson, we'll read the rest of the book and we'll talk about it. So before I even start reading, I want you to think about what do you wonder already about ocean animals? What are you wondering? Hmm. Are you wondering about animals that live in the ocean? So grab your turn and talk partner right now. And I want you to turn and tell your partner what are you wondering? What questions do you have? What are you thinking about? Go ahead and turn and talk now. What do you wonder? Go ahead and turn back towards me now. We are going to go ahead and look at some of the things that my partner and I wondered about animals that live in the ocean. So, this chart is titled, What We Wonder About Ocean Animals. So my partner and I wondered how many animals live in the ocean. I wonder if that question will be answered as we're reading. We also wondered, how fast can sharks swim? Maybe you're thinking some of these same things. Okay, what are you thinking? I wondered, what do giant squid eat? And I also wondered how deep the ocean is. Okay. So, now I want you to think about what were you wondering? Were you wondering these same things as my partner and I? Or were you wondering different things? Let's see if those things we're wondering are answered in the book as we read today, the first part of the book. All right, as I said, this is a nonfiction book written by Janine Scott. Here's our title page. And this is a feature that's in most nonfiction books called the Table of Contents. And the Table of Contents gives you a list of the chapters, and the sections that are going to be in this book. We're going to read, and the page numbers where they each begin. We're going to read the first three chapters of this book today together. We're going to read Full of Life, which starts on page four. We're going to read Coastal Zone, which starts on page six. And we're going to read Sunlight Zone, which starts on page eight. I also want to point out here that there's the other names of the chapters, and then at the bottom we have a fun facts section, a glossary, a read more section, internet sites, index. These are other text features 
of nonfiction books. They often have glossaries. We'll explore the fun facts section next time we read together. The first chapter is called Full of Life. Looking from shore, the ocean seems to hold just water, but it's bursting, that means full of, but it's bursting with animals. These animals live in different parts of the ocean or zones. Coastal zone. You'll notice that the title of the chapter is in bold up here to let us know that's what this section, this chapter is called. The coastal zone is where land meets water. Coastal animals often live in and out of water. Crabs scuttle. That means they run quickly. Crabs scuttle on the beach. Seabirds fly overhead. So we're going to pause here and we're going to think about what do you what did you learn about the coastal zone? Grab your turn and talk partner now. What did you learn about the coastal zone? Go ahead and turn and talk. I learned, tell your partner, I learned that. Hopefully you had enough time to discuss with your partner about the coastal zone. My partner and I talked about how the coastal zone is where water meets the land, which means it's really shallow. You can see this little crab walking on just a little bit of water. He's also on the land there. It's close to the beach. Okay, And there's lots of animals there. Maybe you said the same thing. Sunlight zone. The sunlight zone is the top layer of the ocean. Most of the world's fish live in this zone. Small fish munch, that means eat. Small fish munch plants. Sharks eat the small fish. Maybe in your mind you're visualizing a shark eating a lot of fish. What that look like? Coral reefs grow in the sunlight zone in shallow water. Millions of animals live on each reef. Sea anemones, here's a picture of sea anemones right here. Sea anemones spend their lives clinging to one piece of coral. So there's some coral here around, that's the coral, and then these are the sea anemones. Mammals live in the sunlight zone too. Manatees graze on seagrass. Sea otters dive and play in seaweed. Giant blue whales swim in the open ocean. So now what did you learn about the sunlight zone in that part that I just read? What did you learn about the sunlight zone? Grab your partner again and turn and talk to each other. I learned, oh, I'll let you go first. I learned My partner and I discussed that the sunlight zone is not that deep in the ocean. That's why we can still see the sunlight, which is why I'm imagining it's called the sunlight zone. And there are lots of fish that live in the sunlight zone and sharks. They're there because they want to eat the fish. And there's sea anemones and coral and even mammals like this. This is a manatee right here that live. And there's even whales that live in the sunlight zone as well. So now we're gonna think more about what do we wonder now that we read the first three chapters of the book? 
What are you wondering? Now, this is what we wondered before we started reading. What do we wonder while we're in the middle of the book? Grab your partner and turn and tell each other what you're wondering. You're going to say, I wonder. Hopefully you had a chance to talk to your partner about things you're wondering. I'm going to write down some of the things that my partner and I wondered, and hopefully you will think about what you were wondering as well and see if you were wondering the same things as us. My partner wondered, but I'll write I wonder. I wonder how many types of fish are in the ocean. Okay. I wonder how many types of fish are in the ocean. I was wondering, I wonder if all whales live in the sunlight zone. Do they live in other zones than the sunlight zone or do they tend to stay in the zone where it's not super deep? I wonder if some whales are super deep in the ocean and other zones. Yeah. Think about what you're wondering. Were you wondering these same things as us or did you have some different things that you were wondering? I wonder what zone an octopus lives in. Where does the octopus live? Does that live in the sunlight zone as well? So good readers wonder as they read, and they're also thinking about what they learn as they read. Now we're going to have a chance for you to read your own nonfiction book at home and to write about what you're wondering. If you don't have a nonfiction book at home, no problem. You can read any book that you have. If you have a book on the computer that you're reading, that's great. If you have a magazine, if you have a fiction book, whatever you have is just fine. But if you do have a nonfiction book, let's practice with that. And what you'll do with your nonfiction book is you're going to write about your nonfiction book in your student response book, if you have it. If you have this at home, your Making Meaning student response book, your teacher gave it to you, you can write in there what you're wondering as you read today. If you don't have this, you might have the Seattle Public Schools packet that they've passed out at the lunch sites at schools. So you can write in there. There's a page for your wondering what you're wondering in there. Uh, if you don't have that packet, you can print it off the internet. Or you can just go ahead and use your own piece of paper like I did. Now, you don't have to use a piece of paper that's this big. You can use a regular size piece of paper. But what you'll include is the title of the book and what you wonder. I'm going to go ahead and write about an ocean of animals. That's the title of my book. And I'm going to think about what else I wonder. So you are not going to write about an ocean of animals at home. You are going to write about your own book. You're going to read your book and then write down the title of the book and what you wonder. I wonder, I'm going to write, I wonder how many zones are in the ocean. 
We learned about the coastal zone and the sunlight zone. What other zones are there? We'll be finishing this book in the next lesson, and I, I'm I'm wondering if this answer will be question if this question will be answered. Okay. I also wonder. I wonder how many oceans. Are there? Maybe that's something you're wondering. I wonder how many oceans there are and will they tell us about all the different oceans or are they just going to focus on the animals that live in the ocean? Right. So now what I'd like you to do is grab a book that you have at home and then grab a piece of paper or your journal entry page if you have it at home and read and then write about what you wonder. Okay, Don't forget, good readers think about what they're wondering as they read and they think about what they're learning and then they can write it down. All right, enjoy your book, enjoy your reading time, and don't forget to write down what you're wondering. Thank you, see you next time.